I am not a morning person. Well, this morning's shoot hasn't gone exactly to plan. Uh, I've driven over to Anglesey, which is about an hour from my house, to try and get a shot of this lighthouse. Just there. And what I want to do is get a shot of the lighthouse being carried off by some balloons, because it's a lighthouse. <laughs> Unfortunately, about two minutes after I got here, disaster struck. I was babbling onto this camera in the wind, and my tripod fell over and has pretty much destroyed my lens, I think. So I stopped talking to you and uh, tried to see if this was gonna work. Got a couple of shots before the sun went in completely. Uh, and now it's an hour's drive home to see if I got a worthwhile shot. <sighs> also, if you watched all my videos to date, you won't have seen me drive since New Zealand. Well, I've bought a car since I've been back in the UK. And this is my seventh video, and I'm coming up to 50 subscribers on YouTube. So I've done what every other hugely successful YouTuber does, uh, and I bought myself a supercar. Don't knock it, it's a 1.3. So the problem is that I was hoping to get pretty much all that I needed to get done in camera for this shot, apart from obviously making the lighthouse float. I, was, I knew I was going to have to do that in Photoshop. But I thought I'd be able to get all the colour I wanted. I thought I'd be able to experiment with some long exposures to blur the water. And I just thought that between a few exposures, I could have got everything I wanted in camera. Sadly, that's not quite the case, partly because the sunrise only lasted 30 seconds before the cloud came over, and also partly because the wind blew my camera over and broke my lens. All of which meant I only got one composition and within that composition I only got three exposures. So I got one exposure that's fairly on point, one that's underexposed and one that's overexposed. And between these I can blend them all together but I think I'm going to have a fair bit more work in Photoshop than I intended to have. Uh, but never mind. <laughs> random shot to cut to I know but I had to get out my computer was doing my editing. Basically every time I open QuickTime to try and record my screen uh, my computer broke. Uh, another good reason for coming up, oh shit, oh, yeah, another good reason to come out on this hill is that even though that lighthouse is an hour's driveway uh, you can actually see it in the distance. Anyway if I make it off here without stuck in it I'll show you how I did that edit. Two bits of good news. I got home without falling over. And for some reason, QuickTime started working, so I can show you how I edited that. Am I pointing in the right place? Okay, from Lightroom, all I've done is bring these three exposures into Photoshop. And in Adobe Camera Raw, I've played with the colors a bit. So I brought out the magentas, uh, a bit of yellow, and a bit of detail in the sky too. Uh, if I just get rid of those, I can show you that I've blended the three exposures together and I've done that using luminosity masks. So as you can see, that's bringing the sky of the darker exposure in. Um, I copied that, no idea why. Uh, and that is the third exposure, just bringing up the foreground a bit. Now as you can see, I've kind of crudely cut out the lighthouse just because I wanted to keep the original middle exposure for the lighthouse uh, because I wanted it to stay quite bright and I didn't want to go too crazy with the colours on it. So from here, I can see compositionally the biggest problem is the sky. So as I said, it was my intention to get most of this shot in camera and not have to do a whole lot in Photoshop. But because the light didn't last for long and I didn't really have much time to set up, I didn't have much chance to experiment with long exposures. And long exposures would have made the scene much more interesting because I could have flattened it out and avoided a lot of this detail that I don't particularly want. 
All of which means that I want to replace the sea with a reflection of the sky. And if I was to do that with this sky and keep that horizon line, I wouldn't get any detail in the reflection because there's no detail in the sky. So that meant that I thought it made most sense to just bring the sky down a bit. And I was a bit worried it wouldn't look all that natural, but I've been saved by the fact that there's just this line of no cloud, which makes it look much more natural, I think. After that, I've brightened the colors of the sky a bit and I've made the reflection. Now, as you can see, I've done that with a displacement map. So you get this nice subtle ripple on the water, but also there's this cloud detail in the water that you wouldn't have had had I kept the original sky because it would have just been a, basically a block magenta. So all in all, I think that was worth doing. So the next step is to get rid of the lighthouse, which is done pretty easily with the clone stamp tool. I then matched the colors to the current state of the sky and added the lighthouse back in. Now I picked this area to cut the lighthouse out of for ease really. Um, if I'd have picked lower down, I would have basically had to invent some surface area uh, that would have sat on top of this base. And I am denied for a while about how I was going to cut this, whether it was going to be jaggedy with some rocks falling. But I came to the conclusion that with this foreground, it's already quite a complicated scene and I didn't want to make it any more complicated. So I've gone for a clean break. What this does mean is because I'm slightly below where the cut of this lighthouse is, I'm going to have to include some kind of bottom to the lighthouse. So that's what I did. Nice clean break, just a black bottom. A slight adjustment to the position of the lighthouse. Uh, and I think that's looking okay. Increase the color some more. Obviously all of this is getting pretty surreal now. Uh, so it won't be to some people's tastes. And I don't typically go too far on the color, but I think because I got such a flat image in real life, I feel compelled to just go a bit too far with this. So I'm just gonna run with it. Now, if I'd have stayed longer, I think I'd have probably gone and found a composition that didn't involve these puddles because they're just a bit distracting and I don't think they're particularly necessary. But because I didn't, I'm gonna try and make use of them. And the best way to make use of them would be to include a reflection from the sky as I've done with the sea. So that's what I did. What else have we got? Balloons. So I just got these balloons from Pixel Squid. And as you can see, the color is way off. Uh, they just look a bit flat and don't really fit into the scene. So I've played with color balance uh, and up the contrast to make them look like they fit a bit more in the scene. Now, if I'd have had more time on the shoot and I'd decided to keep these puddles, I probably would have composed the shot so that the balloons or the color from the balloons would have appeared in this reflection. Um, as it happened, I didn't have time to think about that. And what's a bit of a shame is they only just miss out. So if I make that layer visible, you can see that they're not too far away from being included in the reflection. So I did think about just pushing them down a little bit to include them, but obviously I'd have had to have budged the top of the lighthouse as well. And the problem is when you start playing with geometry is that it really does start to look unrealistic then because your mind is cleverer than you think it is. Your mind knows where the horizon is and knows roughly the distance between the two. So if I'd have stuck the balloons in the water, it would have been completely obvious. Uh, what else have I got to include? There's a bit of a base touch up there. Uh, that's pretty much it for Photoshop and I kind of like where that's at. Uh, and this is the final image. All I've done when I've added it back into Lightroom is boost the contrast a bit, up the clarity, up the vibrance a little bit more, which is about as far as I'm willing to push the color. And I've given it a really weak vignette as well. Uh, and I'm gonna leave it there. So I hope that was in some way useful. I'll, uh, I'll try and make sure that QuickTime works before I do edits in future and and I can take you through them in more detail. Uh, if you're interested in more tutorials or would like me to focus on specific things, uh, please let me know in the comments. I don't really know.